Happy Friday, Dreamside fans. It is another beautiful Friday over here. The uh, sun is shining today, which is really the first time we've gotten a good, relatively warm, sunny day in western New York this year. Um, I'm a really big fan of sunny weather. I find it very inspiring, and uh, I love to take my tablet computer with me and uh, leave the home. I work from home, so it's great for me to be able to take my, my work with me and go out and enjoy nature a little bit. Uh, you know, and on days like today, I'm always uh, trying to motivate myself and inspire myself in the morning before I get started. And um, today is, of course, no exception. Now, last week I made a video about motivation. And this week I want to do something kind of similar. I want to piggyback on that a little bit and expand on what I had talked about last week, but move into a slightly different direction. And I'm just going to work on uh, this image from Dreamside in the background while I talk. So uh, there was a scientist named Carl Sagan who's no longer with us, but he was a very intelligent man and he came up with some wonderful uh, science that helped us understand more about the cosmos. And he has a quote that I, I want to read to you. The quote is, every one of us is, in the cosmic perspective, precious. If a human disagrees with you, let him live. In a hundred billion galaxies, you will not find another. So this quote is pretty stunning when you think about it. Because what it's basically saying, at least as I interpret it, is not only that, I, th I think mostly what, what he was talking about here was that we really only know of one human type race that exists in, in the entirety of the, uh, the cosmos at least that we've discovered so far. But what I take out of this is that if every human is distinct and unique, then it means that every single person who can think thoughts by themselves and for themselves has a unique perspective on the world around them, has a unique imagination, and has a unique vision. And so if we pair this concept in with artistic creation, what it basically tells us is that everything that we do as an artist is unique to us. There may be something that we do in a derivative sense. Uh, and, and to some degree, I think I see an awful lot of derivative works. Uh, you could even say this to a degree about Dreamside. It's uh, very difficult nowadays to come up with something that nobody has ever seen before. However, there is a degree of similarity with Dreamside and with any other project that we're doing to other projects that have come before. And there's a degree of similarity between the, the characters that I create and characters who have come before. There are influences that have uh, weighed on my mind as I've created my characters and worlds. However, there's a point at which that line cuts off. And what's left after that point is my unique vision. It's the thing that sets my project aside from everybody else's project. It's the thing that makes Dreamside truly unique. Now, when I was younger and I wrote the Dreamside screenplay in 2003, there was no real artwork behind it, but it had a relatively specific layout and a story. I was very concerned that if I didn't develop it into a project, sooner rather than later, that somebody else, some person or some studio or something was going to come in and develop the project before me. And that was a really disturbing idea because I worked very hard on the script and I didn't want to, I didn't want to think that there was ever going to be a time when I would look like a copycat developing my own idea because somebody basically beat me to the punch. And that's, a, that's an idea that has become less disturbing to me as I have been working on the book. The reason is basically what I just explained. The more time that I spend on it, the more distinct, the more unique Dreamside becomes. And I realize now that even if I were to give the actual text, the 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 long form story of Dreamside to another artist, the way that that artist would illustrate the story is different 
than how I would. Even if they had a similar story, a similar set of influences, a similar artistic style in general, there's still something so distinct and unique about the way each one of us would do their own version of Dreamside that each one would have value and would have merit. Okay, so where I'm going with this is really to explain why I think it's important to do a project on your own in the first place, and not just on your own. In a group project, that's fine, or you work with a, a group of other people in a studio environment. All of it is, is great as long as you truly contribute your own unique vision you will create something that has not existed before and never will exist again after you. And that's really amazing. I can't promise that we're all going to create something that everybody will love. In order to create great works, we really have to put a lot of effort into things. You know, we can't just rush through it. <laughs> and as you know, I mean, what sort of book takes longer than Dreamside? I mean, to say that I wrote a screenplay in 2003 and it's now 2016? And I'm just now wrapping up my first book. I mean, I've been working on it for five years. There was a long time when I didn't work on it. But still, five years on a book is a long time. And the reason that I've done it is because that's the amount of time it's, it's taken to realize this distinct, unique vision. That's, that's how long it's taken me to develop the skill sets required to make it the way that I want it to be. And be able to realize this this very unique very distinct project okay so i hope that gives you some sort of a, a clue as to why you and i really mean you listening right now why your vision is important and valuable to the rest of us and don't get focused up you know over numbers and worry about how many people are going to see your project because it really only takes one other person to be affected by your work to make it valuable. You can weigh the benefits and you can say, how much time do I have to spend? How much did this person gather from my work? And you can, you can weigh those two, I think you should. But the fact that it exists in the first place means that somebody else is going to be affected by it. And really the only way that they're going to discover it is if you put it out there to begin with. So don't let your time on, as Carl Sagan said, the pale blue dot referring to the planet. Don't let your time go by and not contribute that vision that you've had, the thing that, that is, is meant to come out of your head and make the world a more beautiful place. Make sure you contribute that vision, because if you don't, nobody else will, and it will never exist, and that's a shame. So thank you for listening. That's all for today, and we will see you next week.